Thursday, October 12th. It's CPI day to day. Uh, it is inflation. Inflation is the number one thing that the Fed looks at. Uh, right now, number two is the job market. We had both reads today. CPI, uh, core uh, price inflation, 3.7% versus a 3.6% expected. That's year over year. Kind of in line. Yesterday while I was traveling, you had the wholesale price index. Uh, it was up a little bit as far as inflation shows that inflation is still around. So the Fed may hike rates, um, definitely won't lower rates, but they may hike rates in November. Uh, I think with both of these kind of in line, the jobless claims came in just in line. So nothing crazy. I think it was 209,000 versus 210,000 uh, expected. I may be kind of backwards on those, but uh, it looks like no hike November, which is what we're calling it. No hike November is still in play. Uh, and if you want to see how the market did yesterday, here's, here's kind of where it is. Exxon down because they announced the PXD transition uh, purchase. We'll talk about that one because I do have an interesting uh, way to play the PXD if you're currently holding uh, Pioneer Natural Resources and kind of my thought process as to what to do. Uh, but energy as a whole, still in play. Still 100%, I think that's a play. You had the healthcare stocks with Eli Lilly and Amgen. Anything with a weight loss uh, was up. You had your grade eight, that was up again. Uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple, uh, Meta, up 1.86. Uh, Broadcom technology, up. You had down here asset management, BX was uh, BlackRock, I think that is. Utilities, we talked about utilities getting a bounce. Real estate, all the REIT stuff getting a bounce yesterday. You can take a look at this heat map. It is over here on the right-hand side on Finviz. It is just something that you should get used to doing and going to every day uh, so that you can look at it. Eli Lilly, we'll talk about this one. Eli, Eli Lilly was a clear winner yesterday. There's one that I want to bring up, and, and those guys who um, read the newsletter, if you don't read the newsletter, you should get the newsletter. Yesterday's newsletter was one of the ones that I think if you just read five newsletters all year, this is one of the newsletters you should read of mine all year. It's the, re the revision to the Daily Stock Pick core portfolio. I removed four stocks and added two, and I gave you reasons why those four were taken out and why two were added. The four that were taken out, QCLN. Hopefully nobody got into that one. That was more a personal one. When you take a look at the uh, core holdings of this, it was Tesla. It was on semiconductor Rivian. This was a, a basically a great ETF to hold. You can see on this chart, it just sank. Uh, Target removed, even though today it's getting upgrades. Um, it, it has just fallen. I still hold this one. Uh, I have trimmed slightly uh, for a loss. Uh, I have not le left like the entire position, but I have uh, sold some shares because I needed some money to put into something else. Snowflake was re removed for no other reason other than one that I added kind of is similar and I think their growth path uh, is better. This chart shows you just kind of the, um, the how it's traded between 180 and 140 uh, for a, an extended period of time. I don't expect it to move out of there. I don't expect it to get back to its highs until they start showing some improvement. Moderna, 100%, this was a trading stock. This was in the core portfolio to trade on pops because it's a COVID stock and they have done nothing since COVID. I just took it out. Added, SMCI, we'll talk about SMCI right now. Honestly, it's been uh, it's up year to date, two hundred and seventy eight percent. It's got a forward PE of fourteen. Nvidia's forward PE is twenty seven. This is the AI train, and it's a low PE on the AI train. Uh, you can look it up on Finviz if you want to see what they do. Um, you can scroll down here all the way to the bottom. Engages in the distribution and manufacture of information technology and solutions. Basically, they build the rigs that uh, Nvidia. Uh, chips uh, power. That's essentially how it's been described to me. Uh, these guys came up with NVIDIA 
So they know everything about NVIDIA. They can do NVIDIA stuff. When I looked at SMCI and I saw, you guys know I love gaps. The gap fills up top. This gap goes to 347. You're on your way to filling that gap. Um, and we talked about, uh, oh, I can't bring it down. But this this gap up here, and it's from 300, about 300. You're trading at 308 right now, and you've got a little bit of button, button hook. If you got in here at 245 and you want to trim some off, I think once you lose that nine day and you lose the confirmation there, I think you can trim it off. But I'm particularly adding to this one, and that's why I put it in the core portfolio, SMCI. The other one that I added was Palantir. Palantir, it, it in my mind, I think this gets back to at least $25 at some point in time. The valuation is gonna to be tough for it to justify $25. But if you take a look at a long term of this one, we've come down from those highs. And remember, this only IPO'd in 2020, and it was a SPAC. So it came out in 2021, it's held up. That 46% goes up to $27, which I think is where this provides um, some support. Remember, Higher for longer hurts this stock because they are not uh, cash flow positive. Uh, I don't think they're cash flow positive. They are making money on an EBITDA basis, but they are not cash flow positive. They lose about $48 million. You do want to be in this stock when they are cash flow positive. That's why I put it into the core portfolio. You can sign up for the, uh, the newsletter uh, free at dailystockpick.substack.com. It is free. I deliver it free to your email box every day, uh, even when I don't do a podcast like yesterday. I just updated the newsletter. So, um, And the newsletter revolved around the core portfolio. And the core portfolio, if you want to follow it, is here at Savvy Trader, S-A-V-V-Y-T-R-A-D-E-R, Savvy Trader. It, if you're not signed up for chat Savvy Trader, I would tell you to do it. It's the best journaling platform Again, it's completely free. I don't get anything for you to sign up or follow me on this one. But the core portfolio uh, is these uh, 35 positions, so 34 stocks right now. Uh, I think these are great for you if you want to just buy and hold. Uh, look for entry points that are lower. If you're new to trading and you want to uh, uh, read up on some stocks, go to Savvy Trader, look at these stocks, understand the charting of them, ask me any questions that you want. Uh, but the core point was, hey, let's find about 30 stocks in a portfolio that we can hold and it's equal weighted. So it's 100 shares of every stock. That's why you're seeing Eli Lilly is 6% of it because I bought 100 shares of this one at like $530. Costco, I bought 100 shares of this at about $500. UNH, I bought 100 shares of this at about $500. It's an equal weight portfolio. So I started this in June because I wanted to show people, hey, if you buy at the high, can you still make money? Well, take a look. Um, you know, We bought at the high in June, year to date against the S&P, we're up 5% year to date. Uh, the S&P is up 3.94%. So if you want to look at QQQ, um, year to date, uh, the, uh, the Qs are up. And this is, again, just since I started the portfolio. So it's just since June. I say year to date because we just started. it, But it's up 1.74%. Uh, daily stock pick is up 2.49%. If you go to uh, IWM, you know, they, they, they are uh, up 4.59%, uh, or I'm sorry, they're down 4.59%. We're up 3%. So you can track, this is the way you can track your performance. I want you to journal your trades. If we go over here to history, you can see all the history uh, of the core portfolio. When I add, when I uh, remove, you can view more history, but you can see it doesn't, I don't take things in and out a lot. Uh, you know, we started this back on June, it looks like June 20th, I bought a hundred shares of everything. So, you know, again, if you want to follow it, uh, the, the key point is sign up for the newsletter, sign up for Savvy Trader. You won't miss any of, uh, any of the action. Uh, and even if you miss a, um, a, uh, a podcast, you won't miss anything with that. Now we talked about SMCI. 
this is a great article. I will include this in the newsletter. Uh, which one is a better buy, Palantir or Supermicro? I'm kind of, hey, let's look at the uh, the results first. The obvious winner, Supermicro. So both of them were added to the core portfolio. This is a great article. It is from October 9th, so just a couple of days ago. So the news is actually still uh, valuable there. You can take a look at that one. Um, let's see. We talked about the performance since I added it. Blah, blah, blah. QQQ core performance. QCLN I took out. Target I took out. Snowflake I, add, I took out. I added SMCI and Palantir. Uh, let's talk about Delta earnings. Delta beat earnings and guided in line. So they're not saying, hey, we're, uh, we're seeing a, a, a seasonal drop off. They're saying, hey, we're going to continue this, this strong growth. Um, they popped in the pre-market. They are up about 3%. We talked about this one down at about 32, um, going down to 32, never got there, got down to about 34. It's popped to 37 right now. I do think this is a $40 stock. So if you want to own an airline, this is the best in class. Uh, Delta, probably no more catalysts other than, hey, fuel prices are going up. They did say that, that fuel prices were going up. Um, it's not a horrible one to own. If you want to trade this one and you're buying at 37, I think that's a little bit extended on an earnings day. Again, it's up 3.4% pre-market. Uh, I would say that this one comes back to the 200 day, at least at 41. Um, but this little gap right here at about 40, that's what's, in that's what's interesting to me. Buying at 37, if you add a little position, you know, if you want to hold it long-term and, and get long-term capital gains, I think that's probably a better bet. Uh, this is a good article from Seeking Alpha. Sell Google and buy Microsoft uh, because of the search wars that are coming. Um, th I'll include this in the newsletter. It's an interesting article. Um, I actually tend to like owning both. Uh, I don't think I'm going to own one over the other, but I, I like the article. I'll include that in the newsletter. This one, we go over Meta, and I said buy Meta under 300. I still think uh, you're fine buying Meta even over 300. This one is a solid look at the fundamentals. It's a bearish case as to why Meta is too expensive right now, and it's run up. Um, I don't tend to agree with this one, but they make solid arguments. Uh, here, let's look at Meta. Uh, Meta is in the core portfolio. It's at 329. I've told you to get this under 300. Just last week, you could have gotten it under 300. Um, it, it, it's at 327. In pre-market, you're at 329. This is running up into earnings. I think when earnings come out and they announce that they didn't spend as much on the metaverse, I think you're going to see this one at 400. Um, you know, at some point in time, you're going to see it go back to 400. Because if we just go, let's go to quarterly. Let's just look at this one quarterly. Uh, the quarterly right here, you're at 384 in Q3 2021. Uh, that was your high, 384. That's the all-time high. You're trading at 327. Now, 324 is th to 327. That'd be a great move. The algorithm um, doesn't do great on this one. Makes you 0.2% versus just buying and holding the asset makes you 0.3%. But the dip down, if we take a look at, let's just take a look at a monthly. That dip down right there, which was 2021, 2022 um, into 2023, and then you bounced off those uh, October lows and you just ran up. That's why you're seeing a little bit of a pullback. You've just gotten back to the range uh, of growth. So I still think that Meta is a good buy here. I don't think it's a bad buy. Uh, Boeing under 200. We'll take a look at the chart in, in, in one second. But Boeing, big but disappointing month, creates big opportunity. This is from yesterday, October 11th, and you can read about Boeing. Uh, Joe is our in-house Boeing expert, our insider trading on Boeing. Um, he's not a huge fan. I just looked at this one on, on you know, we talk about button hooks at the top, how it, it, it kind of curls over when it gets to too extended and then it comes back down. Well, you're seeing that in the bottom here, the bottom here at, at what, 180 and you're at 196 right now. You've got confirmation above the nine day. The nine day is crossing there. The 50 day is starting to turn positive. You're seeing that that 50 day, that, that death cross right there on September 25th. Um, 
That's not a good move for a stock, but this one typically just recovers pretty well. That's a steep move, steep move. But when we look at a weekly, you'll see we've been under that 200 day for a while. And what are you seeing? You're seeing that 200 day start to cross up. Could this just be the pullback that's happening on another leg up? I like Boeing. Boeing is one of the five stocks that I'll tell you right now that I really, really like. We talked about the S&P 500 yesterday, how Eli Lilly was a big winner. Well, Amgen was a big winner as well. And Amgen is one, um, I think this one, uh, let me see. We've got an article here, uh, should you still buy? This is an article from, from Motley Fool, should you still buy the NASDAQ's best reporting stocks in September? Um, so it's a little bit older. It's updated October 10th, but you scroll down, there's Global Foundries, and here's Amgen. And and one of the things that, that I know about Amgen, uh, you, Ozempic, if we look at Eli Lilly, look at, look at Amgen stock. Take a look at this weekly. It's just bounced off of here and continued up. If we look at the long-term trajectory, you're riding that 200-day. Yes, you're up over the 200-day. This move right here is similar to Eli Lilly, but Eli Lilly is way ahead of Amgen. So look at Eli Lilly. You're taking off on, on Eli Lilly at 544. You're at 605 right now. Within the last seven, uh, I'm sorry, five days, the last five days of trading, you're up 11% on Eli Lilly. Go over here to Finviz. You look up Amgen, okay? Amgen's uh, PE is 19. Their forward PE is 14. It's got a 3% dividend. You look at Eli Lilly, and I'll tell you why I'm comparing these two. Eli Lilly, dividend of 0.75, PE of 85, forward PE of 48, significantly higher. Then here's the kicker as to why I'm looking at this. Novo Nordisk, um, their PE, forward PE of 32, PE of 23, only a 1% dividend. So why am I looking at Amgen? Well, this article says it right at the end. Amgen has a number of weight loss drugs in the pipeline, and the stock trades at a modest forward price to earnings ratio of 13 to 1. If any of these upcoming drugs prove to be breakthroughs, the stock will likely be a winner over the next year or two. That's what you're betting on Amgen. You can bet on Lilly. You can bet on Nova Nordisk. They've run already, but I think Amgen, if they get one of their weight loss drugs, I think that's a great opportunity. So take a look at that one. Uh, that is a great stock right there. We can close this one. And next one, PXD. Um, did you buy it? Waiting for the, uh, the, the takeover, uh, the buyout from Exxon. Uh, here's a great article, Pioneer Natural Resources. Exit, exit the stock if Ex Exxon Mobil announces deal. This is from October 6th. The deal was announced. And the deal was announced at $60 billion, $59.5 billion. $253 a share based on Exxon's closing price on October 5th. The offer represents an 18% premium on PXD's closing price of October 5th and a 9% premium, premium uh, to its prior 30-day volume. Under the deal terms, PXD shareholders will receive 2.3234 Exxon shares for each Pioneer share at closing. So you're getting two shares of Exxon. Uh, Exxon is in our core portfolio. It's at 107. So you're basically getting $214 uh, at, at closing, 2.23, 2 2.32 shares of Exxon, 214. Um, but it's worth 250 per share. I think there's some cash that's involved too that uh, uh, Pioneer uh, folks will get. But you're getting two shares, okay? If this deal is 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 capped, Say it's 100% capped at 253. It's not capped because Exxon's shares could go up. But if it, say it's capped at 253 or 257, like I calculated, that's not a huge move from here. Now, what you do have is you have the opportunity for this one on the earnings call to actually get a special dividend, which probably will be announced. Uh, I don't think Exxon or, or Pioneer wants the stock price to crater. So they will announce a special dividend. It probably will be in line with the old dividends. If we go over here to uh, Finviz, we can take a look at their dividend history. Uh, oh, let's just go PXD. 
um, Pioneer Natural Resources. We look at the dividends and we look at the dividend history. Um, you can see they're paying out special dividends because oil has been going up. So the special one last time was 59 cents. Uh, you will see another special dividend announced for November, I think it is. Yeah, last year, it was $4.61. You're not going to get $4.61. You're not going to get $4.48. Uh, you might get something like a $2 because oil has been in the $80 range. If you get a $2 and you're sitting there waiting and the stock is at uh, uh, um, $240 to $250, remember the cap is $253. I think once you get that, and I think it will be very quick, but I think once you get that dividend and the ex-dividend date, uh, the paid dividend date, um, the ex-dividend date passes. And I'm not sure they're going to announce the ex-dividend date uh, at the earnings, most likely. Once you get that, I think you trim PXD, if not get rid of it all. And I think just because the upside is so limited, I think there's going to be a lot of that that's going on and it's going to put a downward pressure on the stock. So you take the dividend out, you take the dividend, and then you sell it the next day. And I think that's the play on this one because I think there will be downward pressure on that. Uh, I did not know this, but you guys know I ordered from Timu a few weeks ago. I didn't know Pinduoduo, PDD, actually owns Timu. Uh, they're losing billions of dollars. Uh, the, there's questions as to why the Chinese are, uh, you know, shipping things over here at such low cost. Does the Chinese government track what we're buying? Blah blah blah. If you don't know Timu, I'll put a link down below for a referral credit. Um, you can sign up. You can get like socks for fifty cents, a bathing suit for like a dollar. Um, I got what one of these uh, universal chargers. I think I got for, for your iPhone, your watch, and your um, your uh, AirPods. Uh, I think I got that for like $3. It, it's significantly cheap. Returns, super simple, same as Amazon. You package it up. You take it to the UPS store. It's not much different, but Pinduoduo actually owns them. So I'll be watching that stock, and that's interesting because uh, since I found this out, this $98 cross, and you're at 110 that's a big move. I mean, that's a huge move right there from 98 to 79. That was just October 2nd. So China, Pinduoduo, I like that stock. I like that one a lot. Um, significant trend spider update. Um, you can read about it here. I'll include this in the newsletter. ICT's new secret, secret women, proximity indicators. Jason goes over everything that you need to know about these indicators in trend spider. It's another example of how trend spider just continues to give you additional services without charging you more. Um, and again, you can sign up through the link below. You get 25% off. Um, I think it's uh, $480 if you skip the seven-day trial it, for a year. It, it's, it's a really good deal. Uh, social requests. Let's look at restoration hardware. Let me see. see um, yeah, Sully on Spotify. Why don't you look at restoration hardware? Restoration hardware is an interesting one. It's a luxury good item <clears throat> and luxury over the last three, four months has done really, really well. They've suddenly, the consumer of luxury has suddenly uh, stopped. This is 2021 where it got hyped up. Then you saw it fall way down. And, and like I said, over the past few months, you saw it rise from 244 up to almost 400, just over $400, 406. Use that 200 day on the weekly and just lost it. Uh, you can see, and let me get down to my uh, support line, you can see some level of support right there at about where we are 250. Um, you are seeing the 9 and the 21 as negative and the 50-day, you know, they're crossing down on the 50-day. You never want to see moving averages crossing down on a long term or a medium term. That kind of puts you in question. If we run the four-hour algorithm, the four-hour algorithm loses you 60%. You lose the same amount over two years, 60%. Um, you are in at 261. The problem with this one is that they're just not – I think they're, their sales, if, if I want to read it right, their sales have kind of come down. Um, you can look downgrade, downgrade. I mean, it's just downgrade, downgrade. 
Average target price is still 357. You're only at 250. But the most recent ones, 300, 298, 330, you don't have much upside there. And if we look at what people inside are doing, they're selling. I mean, look at this. The one director at 310, he sold $7 million. You can see these guys here, uh, oxygen exercise and sale, they're selling at 262. They're telling you it was too expensive here. You're at 245 right now. You're about where these guys sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of stock, the chairman and CEO. So I, I don't think, I think it was overpriced. I think it's coming back down. You can see the PE is still expensive. 19, specialty retail. If we go to specialty retail here and we just uh, sort it by PE, I mean, look, it's expensive. Uh, we'll sort it down wise. 61 is the highest one. Um, SPWH 38. Where's Restoration Hardware? They are at Restoration Hardware, number 14. So it's still high for specialty retail. I mean, look at O'Reilly Automotive at 25, um, five below. I mean, five below. Jesus, how is that one? Freaking 33. Um, but yeah, Tractor Supply Company, they were heavy, heavy growth, and their PE is 20. I just think for Restoration Heart, Ulta Beauty. Ulta has been a horrible uh, stock for me. Uh, Elf is the one that, that, that I think is even better than Ulta Beauty. Restoration Hardware, I think they had their day. The problem is, is it at its bottom? I don't think so. I mean, look at the weekly here. Um, I think it's put in that support. When we look at that, if we go to monthly, um, it's just kind of, you know, putting in support levels here. I would rather see you on the upside to say, yes, it's coming back. The PE is what kills me. Let's go over to Seeking Alpha and let's look at restoration hardware here. What do you have? You have hold. You have buy. Wall Street Analyst buy at 3.8. That's not super high. Quant is hold. Attractive prospects overshadowed by weak, weak guidance. That's the problem is they gave weak guidance. So I, I, I don't think it's a, a rebound play. I think it's just luxury goods with the consumer becoming um, uh, weaker. I think that's the issue with the restoration hardware. Um, VTI as a tech play for Jay Steibeck on Spotify. Uh, VTI, if you don't know, this is one of the Vanguard um, it kind of, I think it, it trades along with the Qs. And so I don't, you know, it, probably this one's best. Let's take a look. VTI. We're going to go to, uh, <clears throat> no, I want VTI. It keeps auto-correcting on me. But VTI, Vanguard Total Market Stock Market Index. Um, I think you wanted VTI. Let me just make sure. Did it auto-correct on me? Let me go to my Spotify real quick. So I don't do, I, I did this the other time um, where I did not. Uh, how do you feel about VTI as a tech index play? Well, it's a total market stock. VTI is a total mo stock market index. So it's not a tech play. Let's look at Vanguard uh, tech index. Um <laughs> That would be V-I-T-A-X, information technology, um, or VGT. VGT is the growth. QQQ is, uh, you know, VGT might be a better one. Let's, let's chart these. Let's go VTI. We'll go charting. And we'll select select metrics. We're going to do per, uh, profit, no, performance. We're going to do total return. Update chart. And we're going to do, uh, we're going to do uh, Vanguard Total Index, which is V-I-T-A-X, V-I-T-A-X. There we go. And we're going to do VGT. Let's look at these, VGT. Because, you know, while we, we, while we should be looking up the holdings of these, you know, what you're really asking is, hey, what's the return on these? So let's look at one year. You're looking at VTI at 22%, VITAX 43%, VGT. You know what? Let's put in QQQ in here too. Since you're specifically talking about tech, 
<coughs> look at QQQ over one year, 42%. We can look at three year. VTI, 25%. VITAX at uh, 33%. VGT at 33%. QQQ at 28%. So your growth at VGT is significantly better at three year. At five year, your, your VITAX and your VGT blowing the other two away. So I don't know that 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 VTI is a play on the tech index because it's a total stock market index fund. And VTI, you can see, if you just look at the holdings, 27% is, uh, is, is it's high. I mean, it's top 10 holdings are um, tech, but it's a total market. And it's not, remember how I talked about the equal weighting uh, in the, the core portfolio? If you go over here to the Daily Stock Pick newsletter, and then you go down as to, um, <clears throat> you'll hear often, uh, ETFs referred to as equal weight. And there's a link to the stock market, uh, market weight versus equal weight. VTI, because it's a total stock market, it's not a, a, an equal weight. So they're not buying one share of Apple, one share of Microsoft, one share of Amazon. They're buying the percentage of Apple of the total stock market. They're buying the percentage of Microsoft of the total stock market. They're buying the, Am the, the percentage of Amazon as the total stock market. So it's not a, a, an ETF where, oh my God, you know, I've got these, this is a great tech one because they own tech. The only reason tech is their top holdings is because tech is, tech is the top of the stock market. You know, these top 10 holdings are 26% of the stock market. If you want a Vanguard equal weight, um, <clears throat> guard equal weight, uh, uh, total stock market. If you want an equal weight, um, this would be, let's see, VTI. Um, looking for an equal weight in Vanguard. Um, yeah, you can research it. Just find an equal weight one. But VTI, I don't, the only reason that it's a, a, a tech one is because tech is the total stock market. I mean, Berkshire Hathaway is up here at 1% of the total stock market. You can find other things, but I do think that that, uh, uh, you know, the, the VG, the other ones that I charted against, the VTIAX, uh, let's see, what was it? Yeah, um, VITAX and VGT, they just, they outperform. So if you want to look at the performance of those, that's where I would I would suggest you go to. Um, Sam from Facebook. So with everything going on in the world in the Middle East right now, what's your thoughts on KTOS, Kratos Defense and Security Solutions, or even Boeing as a play? I went over Boeing. I think Boeing's great. But let's look at KTOS for Sam. Uh, KTOS. Do, do, do. I mean, <laughs> Can't argue that defense here in you know Israel, Israel. I mean, this one saw a nice bump here from 14 to 17, just with the the probably the war that's going on. KTOS, the algorithm loses you 36 percent on this one. Um, you lose 23 percent with just buying and, and holding. You can see it's below its 200 day. The 50 day has finally started to move positive. Um, I think they'll get a uh, a bump here. I don't know much about their business. Looks like they have two point two billion dollar market cap. They're losing money, twenty eight million dollars. They're losing, so it's not a huge one. Their short interest is only two percent. Um, their forward PE is thirty four. Super expensive. It's up sixty five percent year to date. Uh, July is the latest uh, things. Um, Raymond James says outperform at seventeen. The average ta uh, target price is seventeen ninety one. You're trading at what seventeen dollars and thirty cents. So, I think the upside in Boeing is significantly better than this one. Does that mean it's going to outperform? No. I mean, you take a look at here. There's a lot of people selling, you know, million shares. The president at sixteen fifty. Um, you know, building a pool in the backyard. This dude, uh, VP and corporate controller, he's selling at uh, fifteen. So they're selling at at much lower prices. Uh, all through the summer. So do I believe in it? No. Do I think you should put money into it? Probably not. I'd rather see you put money into Boeing. We talk, look at, Just look at this chart. This is the, the uh, weekly chart. If we go over to Boeing and we look at the weekly chart, 
I think you just see a better opportunity where it's not below. Um, it's got that golden cross on a weekly. And I like that one. You know, it, it, it's beaten down. We can see it's beaten down from the 350s, 400 in the pre-pandemic here. Um, they, they, once they announce that dividend and if they get some cash flow going, I think these guys are fine. Um, let's look at some scans on the week on the, um, the core portfolio, Walmart. Uh, you guys know I hate Target. Uh, it got a cross up here, 158.21. Walmart, great stock. I do all my shopping at Walmart. I like Walmart. It's a good company. Uh, Pepsi. Uh, we talked about Coke coming out of the uh, the index. The Well, paid subscribers know Coke is probably coming out of the core portfolio. I haven't pulled it out because I do think it's, it's on the rebound. Um, Coke and Pepsi. Pepsi had great earnings. Coke had a cross up here at 54.22 yesterday. Um, their earnings are coming up October, October 24th. Greatly over-exaggerated the, um, the move in the weight loss drugs, uh, basically taking share out of Coke and Pepsi. It's not happening. UCO, which is the triple levered uh, ETF for oil. We've seen that pullback in oil, UCO, based on the futures, 3201. I'd be a little bit nervous about buying into oil right now. I think uh, Iran had some talks with uh, Egypt yesterday, um, with Saudi, I'm sorry, Saudi Arabia, not Egypt. And so I don't know that oil's been going to get pulled off. Um, if Iran had anything to do with the Hamas attack, you may see something like that. But I'd be a little bit nervous about buying a triple levered ETF, trade it on a very tight stop loss. Monster Beverage, which is in the, I think the S&P 100, this got a cross up. This has been pulling back. Um, you know, same kind of thing. It's it's probably weight loss drugs and everything that's, that's pulling this one back. It's just, it's, it had a run up. It's pulled back. It's not quite at its 200 day on the weekly. I would look be looking at mid 40s um, for this pullback before you start buying into this one. Um, stocks I like. So we talked about Boeing. Uh, these Those were all the cross ups, by the way, that I saw. We talked about Boeing. I like. Uh, and I'm going to end this 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 episode with just about five, six, seven, eight, maybe eight stocks that I like. Palantir, Palantir added it to the core portfolio. I think anything under 16 on this one, great buy. Uh, I think anything uh, below 18, pretty good buy. Start your position. SMCI, I think this one gets back to three, uh, back over th- uh, 350. I think it continues its ascent. It's at 308 right now. Uh, it had a nice big day a couple of days ago. Shopify. I, I've talked about it before. The valuation in this one is high. If we go over here and we look at Shopify, uh, their earnings are coming up. Uh, their forward PE is 68. They're losing money. They have cut costs out of their business. That's what I like about this stock. They have cut the costs out of their business. If we look at the summary, uh, strong buy. On, from Seeking Alpha Analyst, Wall Street, strong buy. The Quant, huge strong buy, 4.89 out of 5. Shopify is, in my mind, it's a buy. Bull run is likely over on Shopify. I mean, that's from September 27th. I think that guy's wrong. I like Shopify. Um, Illy, Lily, we talked about Lily. I like Amgen more than Lily, but if you bought into Lily, I wouldn't blame you. That weight loss drug is trillions of dollars of potential revenue for this uh, company. And right now, let, let's be honest, we go via Ozempic. They are the leaders in this. They are the first out of the gate. If Amgen has anything that comes about it, I think Amgen uh, pulls that one. Uber. Uber is in the core portfolio. Uh, it, it, it The 200 day, like I said, to paid subscribers, it's, it's coming in there at its support at 44. Are you getting in at 46? And you're waiting for 44? No. Just buy at 46. Get your position in. I think that $50, that red line up there, I think that provides the resistance. Uh, if they announce their earnings are coming up on October 30th, if they announce something crazy, like their advertising revenue continues to grow. Um, if you want to look at the stock market nerd, he's got some great, great um, uh, analysis of Uber. Mara. I think Mara is an absolute killer stock. It's low. $8. Could it go lower? Absolutely, it could go lower. 
But I think Mara, and uh, once that Bitcoin ETF is announced, I think Mara takes off over 10. So I think Mara is a good one. The other one that I like is SoFi. Uh, and you can see it started to take off here at 758. It's now at 859. If you listen to the algorithm, you would have uh, you know, had a dollar in here, a nice big, uh, let's see, how. what's the move? Um, let's see, it is, what, 15%? 15% in what? A uh, couple of days. Yeah, October 6th, five days, six days. Yeah. So I, I, those are the stocks I like. Boeing, Palantir, SMCI, Shopify, Lilly, uh, specifically Amgen, Uber, Mara, SoFi. So uh, I will be back tomorrow. We don't have much news tomorrow. I don't think. I haven't taken a look at Uber. Um, but hopefully today is an update. It does look like the futures are still up. Um, hopefully they're still up. Again, the job numbers weren't horrible. So, okay, take care. See you tomorrow. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock pick trading podcast in my ears. Guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily, don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter, let us help you grow. Taking risks, making moves, seeking success. Together we'll conquer, no room for any less. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock pick trading podcast in my ears. Guiding me through my hopes and fears.